Welcome everybody! After my last C-Star video, people have asked how I edited my photos, so I've put together a tutorial on my workflow. I've started with loading Cyril 1.2, which is a free download. In fact, all applications today are free to use, and I've created a subfolder to place our image in. It's important because we'll be generating a few different files and will help to organize our work. So, first step of our North American Nebula is to open up Graxpert and click on Load Image. Double click. The loaded image will have a soft stretch automatically for us to preview the workflow. Now it's just a case of following the tabs in order. Firstly, cropping, because this was a mosaic. The corners aren't looking too bad, and I don't need to crop any, so I'll go straight on to background extraction, leaving the default AI settings hopefully removing the light gradients, and you can compare the before and after at the top and see what it removed separately. Afterwards, applying denoise, again with the default settings. This will take some time, as it was a times two mosaic. And if we zoom in, we can see how much noise has been removed. Now, just go ahead and save this file with the Save Process button. It'll, by default, save in your original folder and give it a new name to help us identify it. OK, we're now finished here and can move over to Cyril to start the stretching. Go ahead and find your folder and drag and drop your Graxpert file across into Cyril. The black image is nothing to be afraid of, and at this stage is good. We can apply an auto stretch to preview the image on the tab below. This allows us to color calibrate before we stretch. Go to Image Processing, down to Color Calibration, and across to Photometric. Input the name of your object. For me, that's NGC 7000, and click Find. When you click OK, it will then solve the image to give us the correct colors. Looking at this, I'm not so sure on the result, and flicking between Undo and Redo, I will just go back to the way things were. When editing, there really is no wrong answer. Just go with what feels right. So, going back to the original colors, I'm just going to rotate the image to how I would expect to see it. Don't forget to save as you go. Now then, we need to tell Cyril where our directory is. Click on the blue home icon and locate the folder you wish to use, clicking Open. Now here is where we begin our work. Go to Image Processing, Star Processing, and StarNet Star Removal. Use pre-stretch image and click Execute. What you are left with is the starless image, and now we need to remove our auto stretch. Here's a cheat. If you want instant results, click on Image Processing and then the histogram and click the gear icon. You can apply this and save it. This would also work on images before we separate the stars. If you want more control, click on Generalized Hyperbolic Stretch. I select Human Wade to get more color early on, and pull the slider across. As the image brightens, we need to pull the blacks back by using the BP tab. This will darken it. Repeat the steps until the image starts to appear. Keep an eye on the graph, and don't let the colors disappear over the edge. This is lost data. and I will revert human weight to independent so not to oversaturate an image. On these final stretches, I lower the highlight protection so Cyril doesn't blow the highlights and brings up shadows more. You can use symmetry point by clicking to the right of the curve as a rule of thumb to suppress the blacks too. Play around with that final adjustment until you are happy. You have a lot of fine control with the stretching. When you are happy, do remember to hit the Save button. With the starless image done, it's time to use the star map. This will be located in your home directory we set. Drag it across. Repeat the process for the stars.
As I'm stretching, I see green coming through. I hadn't done this on the last step, but under image processing, we can remove green noise. A final stretch. This is a dense area of stars, and you may wish to focus more on the nebula than the stars themselves. To combine the two images, go back to Star Processing and click Recombination. Click on the file icon to open both of the images, one on each side. You can do more stretching, so a good tip is understretch your star map so you can get the balance right here. I've overcooked the stars and will now apply an inverse stretch to suppress them. Something like this, I believe. Now save the combined image in the top right corner and save as a FIT file, 32-bit. And our work with Cyril is now complete, and this image could be considered finished. But we're going to use Cosmic Clarity next. Copy your combined image into Cosmic Clarity's input directory, and run the application. The default settings are a good start point. The first slider I usually leave be. The second controls the sharpness of the stars, and the third the nebula. Allow it to run. The new file will appear in the output folder. I like to open the two in Cyril to compare the visuals. Straight away, you can see the stars are no longer bloated, smaller and sharp. Just quickly show you the before and after. This image could do with more exposure to help bring out the nebula and reduce the noise. Another three to four hours, maybe. If you are happy, take the output file and drag to the input folder. Each step creates a new file, allowing you to go back if you're unhappy. Then run the denoise. We've already done noise reduction in Graxpert, so don't go so heavily. Experiment and see what looks best. Some noise still present, and I can see satellite trails. Export the image. I'm going to use TIFF. Change to 16-bit and remove the C-star information. If you have editing software or even your phone, you can do some final touch-ups if you want. Otherwise, that's my entire process.